Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a freaking long overdue review video on the Color Drain Cheers to the Beauty palette. Now, I've had this for quite a while. I'm a little bit embarrassed and I actually have had this review planned for a long, long time. I just hadn't had the energy to sit down and film it. And I was like, you know what? It's time to move on. It's time to review this palette and get on to the next palette review. So here it is. So this is a, I would say, kind of a high-end indie brand. I think their palettes are pretty spendy. I'm gonna get into the cost, but I've had quite a few experiences with Colored Brain. I've purchased some of their mini palettes. I will link as many videos as I can. I think I have a Colored Brain playlist actually, so I'll just go ahead and link that up in the cards in case you guys want to see all those reviews and shit like that. But I have the Queen of Hearts palette, and this was my first introduction to the Colored Brain brand, and boy oh boy did they have big shoes to fill once this palette launched because everyone freaking loved it. So I had really, really high expectations for their next palette. And I mean, they took their time. They had a lot of mini palettes come out. They have eyeshadow singles, liquid lipsticks, and a bunch of other products as well. I have a lot of different products from Colored Rain. And so I would consider them pretty high end because their shit is pretty expensive. Now, as far as the background of the brand goes, they are cruelty free and the brand was founded to encourage self-expression and diversity, which I think is really cool. I believe Color Grain is a black owned makeup brand. So they really do strive to be suitable for all skin tones. They do have a lot of really bold colors, even with their singles. Oh my gosh, some of their single matte shades are like super bold and gorgeous. Variety of colors and definitely what I would describe as exotic makeup, as do they. And they also carry lippies, highlighters, and palettes, like I said. So I have definitely purchased from them before, like I've already mentioned as well. And I did buy the palette on their website, basically when it launched. This did launch like December 20th of 2017, so I have had it for quite a while. I am not sure if it's limited edition or permanent. I think it's still on their website. I feel like it's gonna be permanent because the last time they made a limited edition eyeshadow palette, like the internet broke and they're still trying to restock. I think it just went back into stock actually. The um, Queen of Hearts palette, I feel like I saw that somewhere. But if you were gonna buy this palette, it would cost you $56 and their shipping is flat rate, so it's $5.95, so a whopping total of $61.95, which is quite a chunk for a palette like this, especially because it is an indie brand. You can't walk into Sephora and swatch it, so you really kind of have to, you know, rely on the kindness of others to tell you about this product and be honest about it. So yeah, I was definitely like salivating because I was like, ooh, ooh, another colored rain palette. Like there was a lot of FOMO that went into this purchase because I was so scared it would sell out, which is basically why I bought it, which is not a good reason. Now, as far as the packaging goes, I really think this is bougie. I don't really like it. I get that they're trying to like show a celebration, but it kind of looks like looks like dandelions to me too. So can somebody clarify, like, are these fireworks? Because I feel like it's fireworks. Plus, I really hate the name of the palette. I feel like it should have just been called Cheers to Beauty, not Cheers to the Beauty. Like, beauty isn't a person. I don't know. So that's just me. Or maybe I'm just really bad at English because it is my second language. This palette is made in the United States. Oh, it says on the back here that it is cruelty free. So let's go ahead and clarify that. But yes, made in the United States and you can buy it on Color Grain's website. So if you are not able to find it, I will go ahead and link it down in the description box for you. Now there are 12 shades in here, eyeshadows, and you get 1.5 grams of product on each of those. And this one highlighter shade contains 3 grams of product, which is a significant amount. There's 13 pans, there are a mixture of warm and cool tones, there's 5 mattes, 2 foils, 5 shimmer pearls, and 1 highlighter in case you were wondering. I don't know why I'm talking really fast, but sometimes I really get into that mood. So hopefully you guys are keeping up with what I am saying. Now this palette was inspired by the exaggerated makeup of the 1920s and the jazz era. Now I found this on their website, so I'm not making it up. And if I'm looking down, it's because I'm reading my notes. So it says, it was a time where women took bold risk, 
with makeup and made a statement every time they had a night out on the town. So there are different shades in here, so let me just go ahead and talk about them. I do have a swatch video of this palette, so I will link it in case you guys want to see it. But basically the first shade, which is Boutonniere, is a matte light rose. And Powder Room is the next shade, and this is a matte pink nude. Rosé is a shimmering gold. Iconic is a shimmer gray brown taupe. Diamond Jubilee is a shimmering silver shade. Opulence is a glittering royal blue. The shade Raise a Glass is a matte deep mauve. And then we have Vintage Feels, which is a shimmer red orange. It honestly looks almost matte, so I don't know why they threw sparkles in there. Debonair is a matte red. The shade Nightingale is a rusty gold. Grand Deer is a dark forest green, and Black Butterfly is a black with purple undertones. And then finally, Luxurious Bling is a champagne highlighter. So they say that this is a staple for all skin tones. And I mean, I feel like, yeah, you could definitely say it is going to work with many different skin tones because that is part of what Color Brain stands for. So I do believe that is important. The shelf life on this palette is 12 months, so that's not very long. By the end of this year, this palette is going to be basically garbage in their opinion. So I did order this on December 19th and received it on December 22nd. So their shipping is pretty decent and fast. So I did do some digging and this palette is not vegan because it does contain carmine, which I believe is crushed beetle, which is how they make reds, I believe. This can be applied with wet, dry, or your fingers. So in case you were dying to know about that and uh, wear time is good. It is like the other colored brain formulas. I don't have any problems with that at all. Now, let's get to the nitty gritty, okay? The last question I wanna answer for you guys is would I rebuy this palette? So I wrote down five reasons why I would not buy this palette. So I said for number one, I don't love the mix of warm plus cool. I feel like colored brain already had a beautiful warm palette. I feel like they should have really decided what their theme was and just made this one cool toned. I really am not good when they come out with palettes like this where they try to put in the greens and the blues but they don't really give you colors to blend with. I think I'm pretty much a makeup like a color amateur when it comes to makeup but what I realized works for me when I want to wear color is to have a matte shade in the same court like if I have a shimmer like this in this green, I also need a matte green in a similar shade so I can blend more effortlessly. When you give me some neutral mattes like this and then give me a green, I don't really see anything that matches this green in the matte realm of this palette. Like if they had given us like a matte black or I don't even know, I need a matte green to make this color work. I need a matte blue to make this color work. So. I feel like they kind of left you hanging because there aren't really any cool tone shades that work with Grandeur, Opulence, Black Butterfly, and Diamond Jubilee. Like, I don't like wearing silver with warm tone mattes in the crease. Like, that's not how it works. So, uh, that's my number one complaint with this palette. Whereas, if you look at the Queen of Hearts palette, you could tell they had a color story of berries. So, they gave you some berry shades that you can blend the shimmers with and they gave you some neutral brown so you could blend the goals with and I think that's something I've really picked up on with palettes is I don't like palettes that do this where they give you some neutral shades, some warm neutrals and then they give you a bunch of shimmers but none of the shimmers really go like if you took out this part of the palette that works but when you think of like these warm shades don't really I don't know you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to explain like color theory, but I'm not really like super good at explaining it. But I just can't make this work. Now, I've talked to my friend Angelica Nyquist, and she says she doesn't mind when there's neutral mattes in the palette because she can make those work. But for me, I just, I like it when my shades like match a little bit. I'm really into like monochromatic looks. I don't want a forest green like this. And what works? I, I just don't know. Maybe if there was like a yellowy green, it would work. Or if this was like a matte yellow, it would work. But I just, 
like these this green does not go with any of these shades so that is a huge problem for me in this particular palette i think this is not a standalone palette it definitely needs like a matte palette to go along with it so if you don't have a ginormous makeup collection this might not be your best bet i would definitely recommend going for this guy because you don't need another palette to make this one work which I think it's something important to keep in mind when you're spending like 60 bucks on a palette. So take that for what you will. My number three point was also color theory. Again, kind of what I had touched on in the first bullet point, so I'm not going to go into that. The fourth point I wrote down is that the Queen of Hearts palette is better. <laughs> so yeah, there's a good... It's better. Just I don't really know what else to say about it. This is the first thing I ever bought from Color Drain and it is not disappoint and it has not disappointed me. I actually want to try and pan this palette, but that's a little bit unrealistic considering how much makeup I have. But I just think this is a beautiful palette. I love the packaging. I love the gold. I love these colors. This to me is like my current like makeup style. It's just easy. I love berries. So I love these two colors. I love this color in the crease. If I'm feeling like just doing like a bronzy eye, I can just go to these three shades and create like my perfect smoky look. So really great palette. Cannot say enough good things. And then my number five reason of why I would not repurchase this palette again is one of the big reasons why I went back and forth in my head so many times about buying this palette is I do think it's a little pricey. I just think of all the things you can buy with almost $60 and uh, yeah, I just feel like no, you know, I just can't justify it and I honestly wish I had not picked this palette up. So my goal for 2018 is to not make the same mistakes again and I feel like I'm going to take a break from Colored Rain since I have quite a sizable collection from them. If you want to try this brand out, I feel like if you are a makeup beginner or you're just doing makeup on yourself and you just watch YouTube for fun, I would go with this one. If you want to be radical and experimental and you're a more advanced makeup artist or you like to play with color, maybe this one would work. But I would honestly suggest just taking a look at their single shadows because they have some bomb single shadows and they usually always go on sale during a major holiday. So yeah. Okay guys, another reason I would not buy the Cheers to Beauty palette is actually the size of the palette. It is really obnoxious. Reminds me a little bit of the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette, and um, I don't think people should make big palettes like that anymore. It's just a pain in the butt. So I do think if you're looking for another reason why you shouldn't buy the Cheers to Beauty Palette, I would definitely consider size. Let me show them to you here. So this is the Kat Von D Metal Matte. This is Cheers to Beauty. Oh my gosh, they're literally almost the same size. This is ridiculous. So if you're not a fan of storing this, definitely another reason why you shouldn't buy this one okay guys i hope i covered everything i did make notes i was talking kind of fast so hopefully you guys caught everything i was saying if you need me to repeat anything or clarify anything you know the drill just leave me a comment down below and i thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you found it useful and amazing if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new here and i do upload every other day so you get quite a bit of content from me and I hope you will consider subscribing or sharing my channel with a friend. And you guys have a good one. I'll see you on my next video. Bye, guys.